Welcome back folks, this is Shane. I just wanted to talk quickly about the Kemper Profiling Amplifier and also show you a few tones that I've been able to capture. Now for those long-term subscribers, you'll know that I've been using the same amplifiers for years, with the exception, of course, of the PV Classic 50 down here, which I've also now profiled. And while I don't love how unintuitive the Kemper is, especially if you're just getting started with it, I forgot how frustrating some of the things were about it. Once you've got it set up in this kind of fashion, it actually sounds pretty great. So I'm gonna show you a selection of tones using my Kiesel here. So this is the one with the Johnny Highland pickups here. I love the sound of this, and this is what I use to capture these particular profiles. So let's have a listen. This is my Fender Blues Deluxe Reissue Amplifier. Now, this is loaded with an Eminence Swamp Thing speaker, so it has a different sound. All of these profiles were captured using the AEA N22 ribbon microphone. And this is one of the best clean tones I think I've recorded. Have a listen to this. I've actually lost my calluses because I haven't played for about three weeks, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you, I can hit a button and get a very simple delay. Now, the thing that kind of sucks about the Kemp is if you're unfamiliar with them is it's really easy to just keep enhancing your tone past the point that's kind of like accessible for a lot of people. Now, what I wanted to do with this particular amp was just get the sound I was used to. So when I add delay or when I add reverb, it's very reminiscent and it's very simple kind of like what I would use if I was using my amp. So this is the same profile now, but with some analog delay. And that, to my ear, coming out of these studio monitors, sounds indistinguishable from the tone that I would be able to record with using this amp except it's pristine clean, which is what I wanted. I didn't want any hair on the note. Now, normally when I play clean, I turn the amps up enough where I can get that breakup sound. If you want that, you can of course profile it, but this is a dead clean sound. These profiles sound so much better than the ones I made back in the day, like four years ago when I had one of these. This ribbon microphone kind of just has all the nice frequencies there. Let's switch it up. This next clean tone is my Marshall DSL 40CR, and this is loaded with an Eminence Texas heat speaker. Again, the same AEA N22 ribbon microphone, and have a listen to this. Now the cool thing about the Kemper, if you don't like the tone, you can just simply roll up the bass or whatever, make it nice and warm. It's pretty sweet, and of course if I want more reverb mix or more actual reverb time, I can turn that up. The Kemper nails the clean thing beautifully. Where a lot of these kind of units would normally struggle is with those clean tones. They kind of just lose some of the magic, but that to me sounds exactly like my amp. And if you're unfamiliar with the Texas heat speaker, it rolls out a lot of top ends. So if you're looking for that typical Celestian sound, that's not for me, but yeah, I love that. And that's very reminiscent. It sounds identical anyway. So that's the cool thing about the Kemper. Up next, we're gonna take a look at the crunch channel on my Marshall. So again, same speaker, same microphone, but I went through the refining process, which allows you to turn down and it kind of mimics that as well. So not only does this sound great just as a crunchy drive tone, but if you turn down, you can get some really beautiful dynamics. <laughs> Notice when I even turn down and then hit hard, it gives me a bit back. And of course you can EQ this however you like, but that's how I did the capture. I love the sound of this. This is a great rock and tone. <laughs> I 
<laughs> so that should sound pretty familiar. Now, one of my favorite amplifiers that I recently purchased is this. I got this used. It's a PV Classic 50 with four 10-inch speakers. Now, I profiled this as well. Now, being that it's got a 10-inch speaker and I was using one microphone, it's got a very different tonality. It's a bit more of a voicey sound. And anyway, let us know what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got the feel. Now the reverb is going to be slightly different, of course, because it's just giving you kind of like an approximation with some of these uh, built-in reverbs. You kind of got to dial them in yourself a little bit. But yeah, I really like the sound of this. It sort of captures that sort of top end uh, frequency that this amp has over all of my others. That really sort of nice voicey thing. And again, I captured this dead clean, and the reason why is now I'm gonna have consistent tones. So if I demo a guitar, whatever, I can just literally go back to a dead clean signal, kind of dial it in for that particular guitar, and I'm good to go. So it makes the whole process pretty easy. As the PV Classic 50 on the drive channel, I made like a blues preset, and also one that's a little bit more high gain, but have a listen to this. <laughs> I am so rusty. Second time's a charm. <laughs> and lastly, over to my Artist Tweak Tone 20R. This is a 20 watt combo. It has a great clean channel and a great drive channel. I also just want to showcase how quickly you can dial this in. So this is with the EQ set flat or as it was profiled. So have a listen. <laughs> So to me, it needs a little bit more low end, which is easy to add. I'm gonna add a little bit of low end. I'm also just gonna take out a little bit of that sort of presence frequency here. Have a listen. Pushed mids. Volume down. Now the one thing you do miss, I'm smiling because that's the sound. I'm so used to hearing it. I use it live all the time. That's the sound of this guitar and that amp. The one thing you do miss out on is that sort of interaction. Now while I have speakers here and they're up, bit louder than my speaking voice, you miss that whole amp behind you in a room thing where there's a bit more almost feedback in, inherently once you get it up to a certain volume. But with that aside, it, it sounds unreal and it feels great to play. Again, super dynamic as well. Let's try the clean tone. I also captured the clean channel of the artist tweet tone. I love the sound of this. And of course you got all the EQ freedom there. I can turn the reverb up and down, all that kind of stuff. Now, what I haven't done with the Kemper is I haven't made it complicated. I've used it like I would my normal amp. So I can plug into this now with any of my guitars and get the sound that's familiar to everyone watching and also familiar to me. I think the, the biggest problem with these kind of units is option paralysis. I've said this for 10 years when it comes to digital multi-effects multi units and processor pedals, all that kind of stuff. I started with this going through the menu, trying to find a great stereo delay. I wanted to like add compression and all this kind of stuff. I started sweeping all the different EQs and I thought, you know what? I don't need any of this. <laughs> as long as I capture it and it sounds good, just add an analog delay for when I need it, bit of reverb for when I need it, and that's it. Reverb's always on most of the time. But essentially this now feels like my amp setup, which is how I'd plug in and get my tone. So 
yeah, I'm not fiddling around with this anymore. I think this must have cost about $100 a profile <laughs> for me to make my own ones, but I figured this will make the most sense. It's really easy on YouTube to get carried away with the audio production value or the, you know, trying to get a tone that you wouldn't actually be able to get through an amplifier. And I think most of these digital modeling processor sort of things like this or the Kemper, for example, can give you better tones than you'd be able to record it in a room. Even though it does capture your profile, there's something to be said about what you can do with these and it kind of, I think, alienates the audience in some ways. You hear these clean tones and there's 15 layers of effects and while that's pretty cool, good luck getting that outside of your Helix or whatever, right? So yeah, I felt like this is pretty representative of the tones you've been hearing for years. So let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. My name's Shane. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.